Finally, and certainly last but not least, is Patty Young. She flies out of Dallas-Fort Worth. She's probably been one of the most active of the various flight attendants, and she bats her mean cleanup. Thank you. My name is Patricia Young, and I've been a flight attendant for a major U.S. air carrier for 23 years. As you know, unlike other workers, the flight attendants cannot step outside for a breath of fresh air when the air is full of cigarette smoke. We are truly hostages at 35,000 feet who are being subjected to pulmonary rape by the passengers who smoke. Unlike other workers whose health and safety are protected by standards set by governmental agencies, we, the flight attendants, are afforded absolutely no such protection. Some of the effects of this constant exposure, I'm sure you will know this anyway, to cigarette smoke are burning eyes, nose, and throat, recurrent infections of the sinuses and bronchial tree, reduced lung function, chronic fatigue, and loss of hearing, and a weakened immune system. The more deadly effects for the flight attendants have been the increased risk of lung cancer and cervical cancer. The flight attendants are dying and have died from the cigarette smoke they have been exposed to while on the job. In the past, I have suffered from acute bronchitis, severe headaches, and a partial loss of hearing, resulting from injuries to my ears while in flight because of the cigarette smoke in my working environment. I have also interviewed many, many flight attendants with smoke-related injuries, some <clears throat> with lung disease and lung cancer, to try to put together some statistics for you today. The individuals will not talk on record, for they fear that their jobs and their health benefits will be taken away from them. And they, they are very outspoken about this with me privately. Every time a smoker lights up and blows the toxin-filled smoke at my body, he or she tells me exactly how they feel about my rights as a non-smoker without saying one word. In response to this silent abuse, I must be verbal, I must speak out and say that I will not be abused by them any longer. The U.S. air carriers, the FAA, and the NTSB should care about passenger and crew health and safety. They should have moved to ban smoking on board all U.S. air carriers after a Varig Airlines 707 crashed and burned in Paris, France in 1973, killing 124 people because a smoker caught the aft lab on fire and in 18 minutes it fireballed to the front of the cockpit. A friend of mine documented that fire for Time Life magazine. He was a photographer at the scene. Also, 23 people were burned to death in a fire board in Air Canada flight in 1983 in Cincinnati, Ohio. The Canadian government has since banned smoking on all flights within Canada and to the United States. On numerous occasions, I've walked through the aircraft cabin to discover a burning cigarette either smoldering on the carpet or in the seats. I alone have experienced five fires on my flights from cigarette smokers. The ability to remedy this problem rests with the Congress. They must be our voice and let the American public know that we, the flight attendants, are not a disposable workforce. They must grant the 100,000 flight attendants in this country the basic right to a healthy and safe working environment. The tobacco corporations, as you know, are motivated by greed and profit. I want to know if Congress is going to be aligning themselves with the tobacco people or acting for the public good. I am truly hoping that the flight attendants will be working soon in a safe, smoke-free environment, and I want to say right now that I will not stop this fight until smoking is off every single flight. Thank you.